Clark County Commissioners went to work this week on filling some empty seats in the legislature. They approved nominees for three vacant legislative seats, but one of them creates another vacancy that the board will have to deal with before the legislature convenes in February. Clark County Commissioners have made their decision as to who should fill three legislative vacancies. State Senate Majority Leader Aaron Ford is vacating his seat because he is Nevada's Attorney General-elect. Out of ten applicants, commissioners selected PUC attorney Dallas Harris to fill the outgoing Democrat seat. Once the seat opened up, I felt that this was the best opportunity for me to give back to the community that has given so much to me. State Senator Tick Sagerblum, also a Democrat, will be vacating his seat because he won a spot on the county commission. Nine people applied for that seat. After commissioners voted, current Assemblyman Chris Brooks trades his title. I look forward to representing even more neighbors in Senate District 3. Senate District 3 is, is where five generations of my family have lived and, and um, it's my favorite part of the great state of Nevada. However, with Brooks's appointment, a new vacancy is created and commissioners will have to name his replacement in the assembly with another Democrat sometime before the legislature convenes in early February. And also this week, a replacement was picked for the assembly seat that Dennis Hoff won after he died. Clark County, Lincoln County, and Nye County all nominating Greg Hay for the second. Now, a timeline has not yet been set to choose Chris Brooks's replacement in the assembly, but the Clark County Commission will have to take that one up as well. And there's yet another assembly vacancy after Democrat Olivia Diaz announced she is going to step down just a month after the election. Diaz says she plans to run for a seat on the Las Vegas City Council. That's the same seat that soon-to-be former Congressman Reuben Kewen is considering. According to his associates, current Councilman Bob Coffin announced he won't be seeking a third term. Diaz has been in the legislature since 2010 and won re-election this year with 81 percent of the vote. But she says she's interested in the city council job to fix infrastructure and address homelessness, not as a foil for Kewen. Not at all. I've been thinking about running for um, the local um, level politics for a while now. I've been talking about um, how our communities should be represented by people who live there, who look like them, who know their problems and, and drive their streets and shop at their neighborhood supermarkets. Filing for the city council starts on January 22nd. In addition to Diaz and possibly Keewen, former Las Vegas Parks Commissioner David Lopez, Department of Veterans Affairs Project Manager Melissa Clary, and newcomer Sean Mooneyham have declared their interest in this seat as well. And I do want to make a quick correction. I believe the county commissioners will take up both of those vacancies as soon as they're meeting on the 18th. Yep. I think at the time I wasn't sure if they were going to be meeting or not before uh, Christmas, so I just wanted to make that. Mm -hmm. uh, sp but speaking of which, back to the topic uh, here, does this and Kiwan chances, do you think, his chances for this seat? Well, you know, uh, Kiwan could still be a formidable foe. I mean, according to the FEC records, uh, uh, he has more than $330,000 in his federal campaign account. Diaz has just 15000 in her assembly campaign account. But it's going to be a low turnout municipal election, uh, and door to door campaigning can be as important as what you can buy with money, lawn signs, billboards, and, and direct mail. Well, a new governor is set to be sworn in on January 7th up in Carson City. And so far, the transition from Republican Governor Brian Sandoval to Democratic Governor-elect Steve Sisolak has gone smoothly. Patrick and I sat down with Sisolak this week to talk about his plans for the office. Take a look. If you had to say your top three priorities going in for your first term and especially your first legislature, what, what would those three things be? Well, the three priorities, once we get in office, we've got a way to go before we get there, obviously, assembling a, a transition team, which we've done, and then hiring some of our initial people. Uh, the same things that we talked about on the campaign, education, health care, and jobs. Those are the three issues that I'm going to put my primary focus on, getting started, and hopefully we'll make some progress on those quickly and move on to some other things. Is the first Southern Nevada governor since Kenny Gwynn. Uh, on election night, you talked about one Nevada and really unifying North versus South, dispelling that notion. Uh, governor Sandoval has sometimes been called the governor of Reno. What are you going to do to ensure that you're not picking up the nickname of governor of Las Vegas? Yeah, uh, it's, it's extremely important to me after coming through a brutal election, uh, both the primary and the general. I had tough elections both ways and people didn't think we'd make it through the primary, then we didn't think we'd make it through the general, and, and here we are. But uh, I'm really strong on the One Nevada theme. I mean, I'm tired of the Republican, Democrat, North, South, men, women, black, white. I mean, I've got to put that aside. I mean, we need to be One Nevada. We need to move this state forward. 
and realize our full potential, we need to come together. And unfortunately, that's not a popular thing to do in politics right now, uh, but it's my intent to do that and to focus on that. And I've told everybody along the way, whether they supported me or not, I hope I can earn your vote next time I ask for a vote, but we're going to be together. And if you're interested in what's best for the citizens of the state of Nevada, we're going to be fine. If you want to make this about partisanship or regionalism or gender or ethnicity or religion or anything else, I'm not going to be with you. There are some s acute needs down here, and one of those is the Clark County uh, School District. Um, we know what's in the budget so far for education. We know there's expanded uh, funding for uh, the uh, school safety programs and also uh, in, the, uh, in the enhanced funding formula. Uh, what else needs to be done to help the school district? Well, there's several things that we need to do, and we talked about the expansion. You talked about the expansion as it relates to security with the schools, but a lot of that's going into counselors and that sort of thing, and, and I don't know if that's going to harden the targets, as it were, when you deal with law enforcement. Uh, I think a couple things we need to do with the school system, we need a lot more transparency than we've had in the past. Uh, that has not existed. Uh, I don't think there's been enough cooperation. It's an extremely large school district. I think that the connection between the school district and the parents on this side is non-existent. I dealt with this at the county commission when, and I know that maybe they're going to listen a little bit more now to me than they did six months ago, <laughs> but when, you know, the tracks and the basketball courts are closed so kids can't go play after school, I've got a problem with that. That's paid for by taxpayer money, and it's hard to go back to the taxpayer and say, look, we need your support, we need your funding for additional schools when the citizens and the neighbors can't use the facilities. So that's going to be fixed. And we're going to have to have some transparency. And uh, the governor put a great deal of money into the school districts, into the education system, the DSA formula, which needs to be updated, the formula. But it's not getting down into the classrooms. I mean, there's not a line item for uh, children with special needs, including autism. If you're on the autism spectrum, there's not a line item for that or English second language. That didn't exist 50 years ago when this formula was established. So we need to start addressing some of those special needs in any new funding. Well, Steve, just like I said, the governor, Brian Sandoval, has been great in this transition period that's been going on. The two of them seem to be really on the same page, much to the chagrin maybe of mm -hmm. the uh, farther right members of the Republican Party and farther left members of the Democratic Party. Well, yeah. I mean, these two guys are very close ideologically, mo more so than many people think. I mean, Sislak's a conservative Democrat. Sandoval is a moderate Republican. So it totally makes sense that their plans would be very close together.